Good. Uh, hello all, this is Dr. Dheeraj Masapu. I am a consultant anesthesiologist and today we have Dr. Saurabh Anand, who is the chief of the Department of Neuroanesthesia and Neurointensive Care in Artemis Hospital, Gurgaon. And uh, today we called him for an exclusive interview on the topic of what are the uh, skill set you have to develop or what is the skill set that he would be seeing in an MD anesthesia person if he has to hire as a junior consultant in, in his hospital. So why are we doing this video is uh, his center is one of the premium centers in India, it comes as a premium corporate. So if he is hiring some junior consultant, then what are the uh, skill sets that he would be assessing? that a person should have and uh, so if uh, we would like to know from him which will help uh, most of your uh, md students to develop during your md time or post md time so so welcome to the channel sir hi hi good afternoon Deeraj. so we this is not the first time actually we, this is the second entry uh, you are getting in the channel yes yes it's my pleasure yeah your channel has grown leaps and bounces after that i think in yeah. the last, last time when you came one year or so it has grown, grown a lot. I have just seen that uh, last interview has actually, the last interview which you just talking about casually about the anesthesia has got some around 3000 views or something like that. So yeah. this is great, it's great to see. Well, great whatever, to see whatever you are going to tell is like a golden uh, amendment for the students actually. So people well, it's good to interact with the younger colleagues, uh, uh, which we are able to join you through, through your channel. So it's, it's social media is the platform through which we can join the younger colleagues and some words of wisdom can be shared. And let's see if they have some queries after our in, after our this talk, yeah. then they yes, can address in your comment section and we can do that as well. Sir, uh, uh, basically we have seen you as an inspiration when we are doing DM. So basically my question is uh, simple, sir. If you have to hire a person as a junior consultant in your department, in uh, your kind of a hospital in Metro, what are the skills uh, a person should have? Apart from the soft skills, what are the hard skills that a person should have? See, uh, if a person has to be hired at the level of a junior consultant, or now we say that it's it's a level of attending consultant. Attending consultant is a term which we used in North India very frequently. So uh, it uh, should be after three years of SRship. That's the most important thing which the person have to have. Uh, whether an experience in neuro or not in neuro, that, that depends how good he has done his uh, primary residency. He might get out exposure of neuroanesthesia in the residency itself. And then he might have acquired different skill sets during his uh, senior residency period. So the most important thing which when I'm talking to the person who I'm going to hire is that uh, should be a safe anesthetist. Now, what do I mean by a safe anesthetist? That he should know the basics of the branch. So with the basics of the branch, uh, so he should be able to monitor the patient in OT and that monitoring should be continued in the ICU itself. Okay, so he should have uh, uh, known the subtle, subtle signs uh, when the patient is going bad, not on the, only about the monitoring part, it should be about the hemodynamics, simple hemodynamics, simple clinical science. Okay, when the patient is not uh, getting better or the patient is uh, showing some signs that he is deteriorating. Apart from that, uh, I will say he should have a knowledge of mechanical ventilation, not only about the OT ventilation but about uh, the mechanical ventilators in the ICU. We should have a basic understanding because I have seen people have, who have completed their residency and then they have joined me for the fellowships and all those things. They don't have, a, uh, I will say, simple, simple things, uh, they do mistakes. So uh, most of the times when you need to save lives, na, you need to do the basics right. Yeah. And the basics are the things when, where most of the people falter. So I think the basics should be right. Other things can be learned during the process as well. Okay. Then I will say ultrasound is getting everywhere nowadays. So I think if he has those kind of special skills, he can be uh, think over uh, above the other applicants. He should have something extra than the other, what the other applicants have been applying to. Because nowadays there's a lot of competition there. Uh, yes. Everybody knows. Yeah, 4,000 people are passing out, sir, every year, anesthesia. Yeah, I've seen your video. Uh, 4,000, yeah. let's actually yeah. decrease the number. I didn't include NBM diplomas. If you add 4,400, it will be per year. Nee, 
even in the super specialities if you look at the number of institutes which are offering super specialities right now are being increasing so our institute also has been now uh, is able to take dnb candidates now we were previously dealing with fellowships so uh, almost i think six batches of neuro anesthesia and two batches of neuro critical care already been passed out from my institute and so uh, now we are going to start the dnb program also yeah and if you think in delhi ncr only there are yeah. so many centers who are offering dm and dnb uh, if you look at the government center a is offering dm the yeah. dn uh, gb panth is offering dm then dnb dnb being being offered by apollo uh, medanta uh, rms so uh, and lot of institutes have been offering fellowships as well so uh, the fight is there yes and then more, most of the people come out and they want to go for the job i will say the first thing towards working in a corporate hospital is the attitude to work so that's that's the most important thing i think you belong to a corporate sector you know the attitude is the most important thing when a person joins other things can be learned those things can be uh, gathered in the process yes but i think attitude is the most important thing which i look forward in a junior apart from the skills which i have got hard working attitude should be there that is what i see <laughs> yes yeah, yes definitely without that i think nobody is going to progress in life and this see this is a cutting edge kind of cut or cut short kind of a competition as well yeah so uh, whenever those appraisers and all those things come we always ask that okay this is this is this duties and all those things have been done by other people also and what special you have done this year Yeah. So, like, yeah. So, paper research, all those things actually come handy when you are uh, talking about and wanting to deal you uh, take your career to next height. Uh, or so that's that's I think important. Yeah. yeah, doing all this paper and research will show that the person is serious towards his career. Like yes, that, yes. it's an indirect way of telling that I am passionate. Yes. So, 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 what I understood is that uh, when I started neuro anesthesia, I thought neuro monitoring is the only thing. But now, over a period of experience, what I understood is the other things are more important: maintaining mm-hmm. hemodynamics and the ultrasound and assessing the hemodynamics and uh, post-operative ventilation. How the fine uh, things that we learn over a period of time; those actually are determining the outcome of the patient. Yes, and the non-invasive things have come out in a major way in saving lives because they can be done at a lesser cost they are readily available in every icu now no ultrasound is a tool which is available every everywhere now okay and if you look at the transcranial doppler if you have that kind of a machine you can do it three times four times in a day in a patient which is supposedly a patient of subarachnoid hemorrhage or a patient of carotid endovascular uh, revascularization procedure has been done on him or a stroke patient so these patients these things can be done repeatedly and you can monitor uh, those patients and you can actually predict the uh, the course of the disease as well that whether this patient is going into a complication or not so these are the skills which needs to be learned in due course of the skills like uh, having a neuro monitoring the skills like transcranial doppler the even the skills like neuro intervention uh, the pain procedures in uh, in uh, the neuro anesthesia part like trigeminal uh, spinopalatine yeah. ganglion blocks the facet blocks or the uh rf for those lo- lower back procedures and all those things add to your skill set and when you have these you have an extra edge over other people Not and it. you need to learn this over a period of time so if you are getting to learn these things over one go in some institution then then i think that is the institute where you want to go and yes. we, you want to learn all those things so uh, even even if you i will say the eeg monitoring and all those things and the monitors which are dependent on the eeg so it's like uh, these are the things uh, which should be there i think in next five year they must they, they will be a must kind of a thing in every uh, person who is going to join in a corporate hospital at least under neuro neuro umbrella so uh, bottom line is competition is building up and uh, sir my previous video i told that it will take 37 years for anesthesia to get saturated that's a uh, india wide view but in city metro it is a different equation yes but so uh, in metro's competition is there uh, it is yeah. metro is a highly competitive world and yeah. in metro uh, the options are also available okay so uh, it's like when you are going to post uh, fellowship seats there are people who are coming to join those fellowships because in metros 
somehow uh, the remuneration at that level is pretty okay yeah. and then uh, yeah you are able to learn all those skill sets as well with uh, in a good hospital where workload is decent yeah okay so i think from the candidate points of view you should select an institute where uh, the workload first of all the workload is decent you should not worry about the number of hours you are going to uh, uh, pay in uh, number of hours you are going to spend in an institute because more you sweat in the peace time that so more yeah. you are going to pain uh, in your due course of your career so it's it's in the younger age i think more you work more you stay in the hospital more the things you are going to gather so you need to work uh, in a hospital where all the things are available okay and i from my my perspective i will always suggest that a person should work in an institute where anesthesia and critical care are part under one umbrella because uh, with the critical care the job opportunities are more and you are able to know uh, the patient from the pre operative time to intra operative time and then to the post operative time it will be a different feeling just uh, for the person to know not only what has happened inside the ot in a patient of suppose uh, subarachnoid amputation but what happened to him post operatively because when you send these patients home uh, working in a neurocritical care setup Uh, the joy is at a different level so you should work in an institute where the work is more where anesthesia and critical care both are a part under one umbrella that's that's my take on it and you should have all the amenities available to learn as well so you should have an ultrasound you should have a neuro monitoring gadgets available you should have an emg ssp things uh, available to you you should have transcranial doppler uh, icp monitors so these are the things i think which should be there otherwise it's it's no better than the people who have done a residency somewhere and then they are uh, not going to learn the higher things uh, in the career so your career should progress yeah perfect sir so the many of my subscribers i have a whatsapp group sir there they will be messaging me sir uh, where what are the workshops uh, being conducted they want to attend a lot of good workshops by good teachers from people like you so i come across actually i come across you are conducting a program in one two months so uh, the annual conference of neurocritical care and anko 2023 so the workshops are very uh, exciting to me actually i want to attend one but you have put me in one of the workshops so can you tell us uh, briefly about this particular conference and your uh, role in this so uh, this, this is a conference which we are going to conduct in uh, from 29 september to 2nd of october it's in gurgaon it's in the western hotel gurgaon and this conference is the fourth annual conference of the neurocritical care society of india and uh, we have combined annual neurocritical care update which i used to do every year uh, about the neurocritical care part so we are combining these two things and this conference is going to be uh, held in gurgaon itself now as about the workshops uh, what we have done is that we have taken care of every person who is working in, in neuro in these mm-hmm. workshops so there will be a lot of workshops which is happening there will be a cadaveric workshop to start with for neuro intervention pain okay mm-hmm. in which i have already told you those blocks will be covered yeah. head to toe everything will be covered and not only the fluoroscopic blocks we are trying to cover the uh, blocks through ultrasound as well okay supposing a patient of trauma is is in icu and you wanted to put an intercostal nerve block okay or a thoracic paravertebral uh, block or a serratus anterior block to uh, help the patient from weaning from the uh, weaning from the ventilator if the patient has got a pledges so these are the things if you have those kind of a skill set these patients will come out so this is one workshop which is going to be very interesting and i will say we are doing it in the medical college along with the medical college and it's a cadaveric workshop people will able to do hands on in it Super. this is on 29 will, huh this will be on 29th september it will be on 29 so all of okay. the workshops will be on 29 so people can choose uh, yeah. workshop this is a whole day workshop okay then on 29th itself there is a mechanical ventilation workshop which i was talking to all the teachers which are there in this mechanical ventilation workshops are big shots in uh, mechanical mm-hmm. ventilation itself so their core area of interest is mechanical ventilation and they go all over india and cross uh, cover all over india for the mechanical ventilation itself so uh, and this more mechanical ventilation workshop will be all interactive workshop it's not boring lectures all together there will be six uh, uh, stations in which plasma tv will be there uh, ventilators will be there and practically they are telling each and everything 
about right from the basics to the uh, uh, higher and advanced ventilation in supposing a traumatic brain injury patient with ARDS is going to come what are the things which we are need to do in those kind of patients so this mechanical ventilation is a uh, second so all those people who are in fact doing critical care pursuing critical care can join this workshop so and then uh, we have made two sets of workshop one is uh, the focus and hemodynamic because they actually have been clubbed together reason and the reason is that the focus is a very important tool for hemodynamics as well yeah. so we have clubbed those work, uh, workshops one uh, first three or four hours will be a focus workshop and then next three or four hours will be a hemodynamic workshop and even in the hemodynamic workshop we are uh, doing it neuro specific and we are going to cover traumatic spinal injury traumatic brain injury subarachnoid hemorrhage and which you are a part of it and yeah. uh, you are going to attend that workshop as well so yeah. if you if you look at uh, those uh, workshop this is a one set of workshop so people at the price of one are going to get two workshops in this okay okay got another workshop which we have combined is transcranial doppler and eeg got okay it. so eeg for the neuro intensivist and transcranial doppler for the neuro intensivist in the transcranial doppler workshop itself i will be there and uh, with me uh, dr vijay sharma who is uh, one of the leading uh, transcranial doppler physicist neurophysicist uh, i will say neurologist sir is uh, if you have listened to one of his lecture i think you will be fan of okay teaching. so and dr arthi sarwal is coming from us in transcranial doppler workshop so we have combined this because pcd and eeg also go hand in hand so this is okay. this is the second uh, club workshop you are going to get two workshops the price of one in this this set as well and we have actually have a nursing symposium as well for all those nurses who yeah. have been uh, doing uh, trainings in neuro and working in neuro setups and those who want to learn what special in the neuro nursing so we have kept a symposium separately on that as well so this is a lot a lot of uh, things which are going to do on 29 september oh super sir actually if uh... i was given an option i will go for the cadaveric thing because that is new for me actually yes so lot of queries have been asked and i think we have kept it at a very very attractive rates as well if you look at most of the cadaveric workshops they have been charged usually 30 40000 uh, yeah and we have kept it to 4500 or 2 so very reasonable it is so it's, it's a very reasonable i think uh, workshop and i think with that the conference also itself get us to different things which you are going to encounter in a neuro intensive care so those who are working in critical care those who are working in uh, neuro anesthesia those who are working in a working neurologist and those patient people neuro neurologist and neuro surgeons who look after their patients most of the yeah. time in icu themselves so they they are going to get to gain from this conference i will say so the registration link and the other details i'll put in the description sir so that it will be easy for yeah. people to register and uh, i know how you teach more of interactive based it will be yeah so most of the most of the even the most of the conferences we have kept uh, interactive case discussions with the people with the people who are the audiences are going to be involved through the voting voting pads or uh, all those things there will be quizzes and all those things will be going on in the conference so i think that will be a good thing for the uh, students to learn and actually they can come and see an another area where anesthesiologists are ex- excelling got see, it uh, see most of the people uh, take the anesthesiologists and most of the time working in the folk of corridors of the ot but then critical care is one aspect and the neuro intensive care is totally a super specialist aspect yeah. i think uh, that will open the eyes of the younger generation that this is how they can pursue and they can reach to a career in neuro intensive care as well yes yes that is a, a re, just a, today I released a video on uh, how to think like think like elon musk so basically uh, yeah i released so it is more like you have to increase the entry barrier to your work is what i told so the neuro intensive care and all these things they, the, the entry barrier is raised so people uh, just can't enter it they have to go through the remedies and you know yeah. thing and so the competition will be lesser i told so when you go to such a niche but it's an interesting world i think more and more people will uh, look into that see if you look at us uh, i if i'm not wrong I, i might be wrong there are more than uh, 1000 or 1500 board certified neuro intensive care there because it's been there since long time actually in us uh, it's been there for a long time still uh, in baby steps in 
in India, India. Is the nascent stage, but I think it's growing day by day. Yes. In day India, day, people search for neurointensivists, uh, your name and four or five names will come at present, who are doing exclusively. Yeah. In, yes, in think, yeah. yeah, but I think it's, it's, it's coming and people are more and more interested. If you look at the critical care population also, they also want to sub-specialize their work. Okay, yes. and with that, if you look at more of a subspeciality ICU, they have got good good outcomes as well that has been proven in the research uh, yeah. as well. So I think uh, that is the way to go in the super specialties at least. Yeah, in the metros it is happening, sir. In Bangalore, in Apollo, in our my Sakra, and uh, you know, even Saint John's has exclusive, and uh, so most of the metros are going into this model of uh, uh, exclusive neurointensive care. I think down the line it will be a new separate. It is, it is going to come in their B cities now. If you are going to some cities like even Raipur, Jaipur, they're also or, yes. So the people are now being at least neuro anesthesia has got more acceptance there, and yeah. the neuro anesthesiologists are taking charge of the ICUs as well. Yes. Slowly and steadily, uh, it's building up there as well. That's what I have seen because I'm, when I'm going to conduct all those courses, um, uh, last time I went to Jaipur, previously went to Dorpur. So I'm seeing that uh, people who are keen uh, in neuro, neuroanesthesiologists are taking over the neuro ICU business and it's very heartening to see. Yes, uh, basically, uh, if they learn all the skills which you told, then they can uh, claim the value that they are yeah. putting. Yeah. Correct, yeah. Answer. It will be, yeah. Yes, it's correct. It that if you plant somebody, they can't do justice for the troll actually. So that is the problem. Definitely. I think and your channel also is helping a lot. Huh? The younger generation has <laughs> been following you and the anesthesiologist. I'm seeing that they are requesting you on this. Please make a video on this, sir. We are going to see that, sir. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's good. Right? That's good. Uh, because, that's not available to us at our time. We were just going with the flow, whatever. Uh, the people are doing, we are just doing that. So it's, it's good that generation, younger generation is actually now more enthusiastic. They wanted to know what what we are going to learn in a particular institute, what we are going to learn in a particular branch, what yeah. is the scope of that branch and what, what, what all those things uh, we are going to learn in the course, um, supposing in a fellowship course or something like that. So that, that's good. No, uh, now younger generation has changed, sir, actually. Yeah, particularly my subscribers actually are very pro proactive. They actually ask me, they'll tell me what video to be done next. And uh, okay. yeah, I feel that. So next generation is actually strong. That's what I understood. <laughs> but we have, I'm trying to connect them to right people. Like uh, for them to know you and meet you, it's very tough. So my channel is creating some communication. I mean, with that's, that's good. Yeah, that's, that's, we are also meeting those uh, people through you as well. So yes. that's, that's good for us as well. To know more and more people and what what their thinking is that is that is uh, actually in a way helping us uh, to teach our student so that uh, we should know what they want yeah. to be to be fit in the world in this competitive world when they go out yes exactly. so that's the most important thing so Superb, sir. I think uh, uh, this discussion will uh, help many, many, many thousands of people, and uh, hope they will uh, will will meet them in the conference when they come, and we can have more chats there. And if you guys come to the conference and meet sir and me, I will also be there in the conference for all the three days. We can have uh, chats, personal discussions also there, and we can clear more uh, doubts in a personal level. Definitely, and I thank you for giving me this opportunity to interact with the younger generation and I think uh, we are going to meet them, some of them at least in our, yeah. our events as well. Some of them will come, sir. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. I'd like to invite all of them who are basically subscribers in Dr. Deere's channel. Please go ahead and register in the link which is which Dr. Deere is going to give you uh, for the conference and we will meet you and we will solve all your things. You can have yeah. a chat uh, over a cup of coffee. Yeah, my subscribers will get a personal chat with sir in the conference for a 10 to 15 Definitely. minute time. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. I will be there, all there. Yeah. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you for coming, sir. Uh, and thank see you, you, you soon in the conference. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you, David. Thank you.